So with Yamaha announcing that they're going to discontinue the R1 in Europe, what does that mean for the North American market? So the other day, Yamaha came out and announced that they're going to discontinue the sale of the R1 in Europe for anything besides track use. This is very similar to what they did with the R6 back in 2020. Um, the, Euro, the R6 failed Euro 5 admissions, and now the admissions have been updated to Euro 5 Plus. Euro 6 is going to be coming out within the next couple of years as well. Uh, and the R1 failed the Euro 5 Plus uh, homologation. So it doesn't pass their emissions in Europe, and now they're discontinuing it for that reason. Now they're allowing it for track use only, but I don't know how long that's going to last. It's homologation eligible till 2028, this particular model, the R1, but I don't know if they're going to hold on to it that long, if they have something in the works of trying to make that motor uh, more efficient, uh, a little bit more carbon neutral for the Euro 5 Plus standards, so that they can come out with a new R1 model. And what does it mean for the US market? If it's following in the suits of the R6, they're gonna discontinue it here too. Yamaha has said that uh, they're gonna continue selling in Europe for 2024, and in 2025, they will be selling it in the United States still. They have failed to mention anything past 2025. That to me, makes me think that it's probably going to end uh, the same way that the R6 did. The US market, is a large market, particularly for the 1000s, they do sell well. The 600 class, the reason they discontinued it was the 600 class was dying anyway. Uh, I ride a CBR 600, they're great bikes, I love them. They're terrible street bikes. Don't let anybody tell you any different. They're just, they're not optimal for the streets. They, you wanna rev them out, you wanna go, my bike doesn't pull those 7,000 RPM. If I wanna even have a little bit of fun on it, in first gear I'm doing 70 miles an hour. So it's just, they're great bikes. They're just not great for the streets. The 600 class was dying. So they decided to discontinue it all the way around in both markets all in one go. The 1000 class is definitely stronger in sales compared to the, the 600 class. Uh, but you're still talking about doing two different bikes for two different markets. And I just don't think that they're gonna do that. I think that uh, 2025, the R1's probably gonna go away. Um, I think that the replacement is going to be along the same lines as the R7 compared to the R6. Uh, from what I've heard, they're producing a MT09 based superbike. So it'd be, a, you know, whatever that is, an 8, 890 triple or whatever they up the motor to, you know, close up, a 900cc triple, which is a great bike. I mean, the MT09 is a monster. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The MT09 is a monster. It's a great bike. Uh, they pull like crazy. The torque's awesome. They're not an R1. They're not a, uh, a you know a, a super bike in my eyes. I, even if you dress it up like one, it's the same as the R7. The R7 was really disappointing to me. I think it's a cool bike. I think it's great for people that are that are getting into it and they want you know uh, a bike that looks great but you know isn't 120 horse. You know and and 600s are. Not great starter bikes. They're not bad by any means, but uh, you know it's it's they're they're a lot of bike, and if you don't respect the power that they have, then a lot of new people uh, will will put them down. So having you know a bike that looks the same at like what sixty eight horse, that's great. I don't think they should have called it an R seven. Um, you know, I think the the original R seven has some great history to it, so I don't think calling it an R seven was doing anybody any favors. Uh, and I think they did it solely for marketing. Um, I think to actually bring back some of that, the heritage that the R7 badge has. I just don't think that bike's worthy of that. But that's my take on it. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of the R7s personally. I think they're a little underwhelming. Um, I, I'd much rather go with a 400 double R from uh, Kawasaki. I think that's a fantastic bike. It's not pretending to be anything that it's not. You know, if you, I think with the Canadian tune, you're getting close to 80 horsepower out of them. Uh, you know, a little 404 cylinder that's revs to 16,000. Like, that's hilarious. That's doable and fun. And it's not trying to be anything that it's not. Uh, really cool.
cool bike. I actually want to buy one just because I think they're hilarious. But I think the Yamaha R1 is going to be replaced by a 900cc class triple super bike, probably 2026. Um, I just, uh, it's too much, I think, to have. Yeah, we're still going to produce the R1 for the United States market, but for the European market, and then we're going to do a different bike. And they already have that 900, the R9, or whatever they're going to call it, in the books. You know, they, it's been hinted at for a while now. I just think that that's going to be the replacement. It's just a gut feeling I have. So, it's definitely a disappointment. Uh, the R1's a great bike. They are phenomenal. They sound amazing. They look great. Uh, I think the current generation is the most polarizing. Either you love it or you hate it. It took me a while to, for it to grow on me, but now I think it's a really good looking bike. Um, I'm a big fan of the, you know, like 20, I think it's like 2009 to 2014 or something like that. That run that they did. Um, they are just gorgeous bikes and they're incredibly powerful, very quick. Um, they're really, really good bikes. And, and the market shows that. I mean, you see R1s everywhere. But I just don't see it getting past this, especially with the emissions getting stricter uh, in Europe. And I don't think the United States is, is too far behind it. You know, they're really trying to swing towards uh, electric vehicles, and, and California in particular keeps getting stricter and stricter and stricter. And California's crazy, though. Uh, but I think depending on, you know, how the election cycles go, we might see more national standards on admission. And that, I don't think it's going to be as strict as the Euro spec, but I think that it's going to start eating into these, these new production high-performance cars um, and, and bikes. So I, I don't have anything to back that up. That's just kind of a, a, a you know, feeling I have or, you know, how I think it's, it's going to play out. I do think that the R1 will will end up getting discontinued, which is sad. Only time will tell with this. I'm hopeful that they'll announce that they're coming out with a, a more efficient, you know, cleaner burning 1000 that's, I'm sure gonna produce, you know, give or take 200 horsepower if, if that happens. Um, the MT-09, I think it's at like 130. Torque figure's good on it, don't get me wrong. Triples, triples sound great, they're torque monsters. Uh, but going from a bike that's like, I don't know the exact spec on the Yamaha R1 right now, but, you know, let's say 180, 190 horse. Uh, going from that to a bike that produces 100, 135, maybe they spruce it up and it's 140. That's still a big drop. I mean, that's closer to the old 600 class than it is to the, the uh, you know, Superbike 1000 class. I mean, my CBR with the, the modifications done on it is 140 horsepower at the crank. Now, albeit with much less torque than a 900 triple, but still, you're getting closer to those figures than you are a uh, true superbike. So we'll see how it plays out, but I do have a feeling that after 2025, the R1 will be discontinued. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me on another Shop Talk, and I'll see you in the next one.